Hello everybody, this video is on diffraction. When wave, such as light, passes through a small aperture, slit, or around a bend or edge of an object, it experiences scattering. This phenomenon of a wave is called diffraction. The size of the slit, or the opening, relative to the wavelength of the wave determines the extent to which the scattering or diffraction will occur. If the slit size is smaller than the wave's wavelength, then considerable amounts of diffraction will occur. If the slit size is larger than the wavelength, diffraction will still occur, but to a less noticeable extent. It is important to know that the smaller the size of the slit or aperture, the greater the degree of diffraction. The effect of diffraction can be easily understood using Huygens' model of light, which describes light as a longitudinal wave whose primary wavefront consists of secondary wavelets. He stated that these wavelets will propagate forward in a semicircular direction. When these wavelets superimpose, they will form the primary wavefront. Huygens explained that when a wave, such as light, passes through a small slit, only some of the wavelets will be able to pass through. The new wavefront will appear to have scattered due to the superposition of the wavelets that managed to emerge out of the slit. This explains why the extent to which a wave diffracts increases when the size of the slit decreases, as fewer numbers of wavelets can pass through the opening. When a wave passes around the edge of an object, it also undergoes diffraction, because some of the waves that form the original wavefront are not able to pass through the object. Due to the absence of these wavelets, the new wavefront will appear to scatter or propagate outwards after it travels around the bend. Huygens' wave model of light and the property of interference help explain diffraction due to multiple slits. For example, in an experiment using two slits, the wavelets that emerge from them will superimpose and undergo interference. At the viewing screen, the maxima that are formed as a result of constructive interference between the wavelets and the minima are formed due to destructive interference between the wavelets. This leads me to discuss the historical significance of Thomas Young's double slit experiment. Young performed a simple experiment whereby monochromatic light, that is light of a single color or wavelength, is passed through two slits separated by a very small distance. At the time this experiment was performed, there were two main models of light, Newton's corpuscular model, which describes light as small particles, and Huygens' wave model of light. Using the two models, two very different hypotheses can be made for Young's experiment. Newton's corpuscular model predicts that only two streams of particles or corpuscles will pass through the two slits, leading to the formation of two spots on the screen. In contrast, Huygens' wave model as we just discussed, predicts that more than two spots or maxima will be formed due to the constructive interference between the wavelets that will emerge out of the two slits. Eventually, Thomas Young saw that multiple bright spots were formed on the screen, which supports Huygens' wave model and refutes Newton's corpuscular model. In addition, Young noticed that the intensity of each bright spot or maximum decreases as it gets further away from the center or the midline between the two slits. He also noticed that although the intensity changes, the distance between adjacent maxima or bright spots remains the same. Young's observation can be further analyzed by considering interference. We discussed earlier that each maximum or bright spot is formed due to constructive interference which occurs when two or more waves, exactly one wavelength or a multiple of wavelength, that's called an M lambda, apart. When this happens, you could see that the crest and the crest of the two waves will add up and they will undergo constructive interference producing a wave that has double the amplitude. On this diagram, suppose that the first maximum or bright spot away from the center is formed at an angle theta relative to the midline. By constructing a right angle triangle, we know that this angle here will be 90 
degrees minus theta. And if this angle here is also 90, then this will give us angle theta over here as well. For the two waves that emerge out of the two slits to constructive interfere, the difference between their positions must be a multiple of lambda. So this could be one lambda or one wavelength, two lambda, three lambda, etc. So now we've got a right angle triangle where this angle here is theta, the opposite side is m lambda, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is d, which is the distance between the two slits used in the experiment. So if we take sine theta, which will be the opposite side divided by hypotenuse, we can derive an equation for two slit diffraction. d sine theta equals to m lambda, where d is the separation distance between the two slits, angle theta is the angle at which the maximum is formed relative to the middle of the two slits, m refers to the order of the maximum, and m here could be 0, which refers to the middle maximum or the central maximum, could be 1 or minus 1, that refers to the first pair of maxima that's next to the central maximum, could be plus 2, minus 2, plus 3, minus 3, etc. m must be an integer. Minima, which are positions on the screen where there are no light being observed, are formed due to destructive interference between the waves that emerge from the two slits. Destructive interference occurs when there are two or more waves that are exactly a multiple of half a wavelength apart. So in this example here, the displacement between the two adjacent waves will be exactly half a wavelength or half lambda. And when this happens, the crest of one wave will destruct interfere with the trough of another wave, producing what we call a minimum point on the screen. In terms of mathematical models, this will give us the equation of sine theta equals to half plus m, which is the integer, times a lambda over d. When m equals 0, we'll get the equation of d sine theta equals to half lambda. This is the scenario that we just discussed when the two waves are exactly half away from the part. If m equals to 1, this will give us d sine theta equals to 3 over 2 lambda. So this is when the two waves are one and a half wavelengths apart. In that case, they will also undergo destructive interference. Young's double slit equation, d sine theta equals to m lambda, can be used to analyze the diffraction pattern of light when it passes through two slits. From this equation, we can study the relationship between the variables shown. For example, if we have a longer wavelength of monochromatic light and we pass this through the two slits, this will give us a greater angle for each of the maximum that's observed on the screen. In other words, different colors of visible light, because they've got different wavelengths, they will form maxima at different positions on the screen. The equation can also help us understand the relationship between the distance of separation between the two slits, that is the lowercase d, and the angle at which the maximum is occurring. If we rearrange the equation, we can see that sine theta is inversely proportional to the distance d. So that is, if you have a larger slit separation distance, you will get a smaller angle at which the maximum will occur, vice versa. Besides monochromatic light, white light can also undergo diffraction, but it will produce a slightly different diffraction pattern as we, what we saw earlier. First of all, it produces a central white band right in the middle on the screen. And this central white band is surrounded by multiple repeating rainbow spectra. Each rainbow pattern corresponds to the maximum point that we referred to earlier. And the angle or the position of each maximum can be quantified using the double slit equation. The important aspect to pay attention here is that in the rainbow spectrum, the red color is always further away from the central white band compared to the blue color, which is always closer. And also the intensity of each rainbow spectrum becomes lower and lower as you go further away from the middle. The color arrangement is due to the fact that different colors of light have different wavelengths. Red light has a greater angle from the midline due to the fact that it has a larger wavelength. 
in the equation, if we have a longer wavelength, we'll also have a greater angle. In contrast, for violet light, due to its shorter wavelength, it will have a smaller angle of diffraction from the midline. And this is why for every rainbow spectrum, the violet slash blue side of the spectrum is always closer towards the middle compared to the red side of the visible light spectrum. The intensity of each spectrum decreases with increasing order number, that is m, because there are fewer number of waves undergoing interference as we go away from the midline. For any type of diffraction pattern, there's always a finite number of maxima and minima that will be observed. Diffraction bands or diffraction patterns must be within 90 degrees relative to the midline. That is, if we draw a vertical line from the slit to the screen, the angle at which you can see a maximum, it has to be less than 90 degrees. Because if it was 90 degrees, it would not have been able to be projected onto the screen as 90 degrees will be traveling parallel to the slits. We can use this theory to calculate the theoretical number of diffraction bands that will be observed for a particular experiment. In the double slit equation, if we make the angle 90 degrees, we'll get an equation where m is equal to d on lambda. m here is the greatest order that will be observed. The greatest order depends on the distance between the slits and the wavelength of the wave. So if we increase the distance between the two slits, we'll also increase the maximum order, which means the number of diffraction bands that will be observed also increases. If we increase the wavelength of light that is passing through the two slits, we'll decrease the maximum order or n value, and that in turn will decrease the total number of diffraction bands that we can observe. In an experiment that uses more than two slits, we usually refer to the apparatus as a diffraction grating. Diffraction grating produces a very similar diffraction pattern as a double slit apparatus. The only difference here is that a grating will produce sharper and more defined lines or diffraction bands that have a greater resolution. This is due to the greater number of interference between more waves or wavelets that's passing through the slits. You can compare the two images. In both diffraction experiments, the position and the number of each maximum remains unchanged, but the definition and the sharpness of each maximum becomes greater when we're using more slits as compared to just two slits.